thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking at this conference. Um, so, as mentioned, I'll be talking about uh, Islamic State administration and also looking at its provinces, or as they're known by the Arabic term, the wilayas. And uh, I'll look at both Iraq and Syria and this, these wilayas abroad that have been created in various countries as part of the international expansion of the Islamic State and uh, uh, marketing as a, as a global franchise. Um, so, I mean, the most complex form of uh, Islamic State governance administration we see has come since uh, with the declaration of the Caliphate uh, on uh, 29th of June 2014. And uh, unlike uh, previous iterations of the Islamic State, for example, the Islamic State of Iraq, which was declared back in 2006 and was the first statehood claim of the Islamic State's predecessors, this was built on uh, uh, real governance structures that were developed really first in, in, in were developed on the ground uh, really in Syria uh, in uh, 2013 to 2014. As Mara mentioned, you know, Ju July, June, July 2013 is when Islamic State started to control uh, real territory territory within within Syria, and uh, you begin to see some of these uh, bureaucratic bodies that were functioning on the ground. I mean, at the time in 2013 to 2014, I think two very important bodies uh, that emerge as part of this development of Islamic State governance are uh, uh, the Islamic Court and uh, also the Dawa Office. Um, as Christoph Reut actually pointed out yesterday, uh, the Dawa Office could, uh, at that time, uh, at a time when Islamic State was, at, or what was then Islamic State in Iraq and Sham or ISIS was expanding in northern Syria, the Dawa Office was, was really used. Uh, besides for actual religious outreach to the population was also used for a subversive purpose of spying on your enemies and getting to know who they were. A good example of this was in the town of Azez in northern Syria, which became one of um, ISIS's uh, uh, major border strongholds in 2013. They moved into the town in July 2013, and then they set up a, a, a dawa office, and they were using it to recruit people in the town who didn't like the local brigade there called Northern Storm. And then when they felt they had enough strength, they then uh, launched an armed takeover in September 2013. Um, and then, of course, the Islamic Court, uh, Mara has discussed this in her previous presentation. Um, so this, is, this was the beginning of real governance in Syria. I mean, this isn't to say that there had been no conceptions of, of, uh, state, of, of state governance in uh, previous iterations of the Islamic State. So for example, when the Islamic State of Iraq was first declared in 2006, in 2007 and 2009, you had, uh, uh, via its own propaganda wings, they issued these cabinets of ministries, or wizarat in Arabic, um, that uh, had these various titles like oil, agriculture, agriculture and fishing, uh, Sharia committees, and, and, and health, uh, but they didn't really amount to much. Um, now, uh, what we see in, uh, in uh, the current iteration of the caliphate with the control of contiguous territory span spanning Iraq and Syria and uh, control of major cities um, is, is, is a framework that's uh, based not around wizarat is the Arabic term, but the diwa diwawin or the diwans, uh, which basically it means the same thing, but it's, it's, it's uh, just a matter of different terminology. But unlike, unlike back then, this actually amounts to something on the ground. Uh, and so this is the main aspect of, of, of IS governance, uh, Islamic State governance today, and we'll look, uh, look in more detail about what exactly these bodies are. There are other uh, administrative bodies. Uh, we will also look at how they fit in the framework. For example, the Hijra Committee, um, uh, as its name suggests, deals with migration issues. So for example, it manages uh, Islamic State border crossings with the outside world. For example, the village of Darbik. Uh, which is most familiar to people as, uh, as, as featuring in supposedly apocalyptic uh, Islamic State propaganda, but uh, in reality actually serves a much more mundane purpose, which is to uh, uh, allow people, say, who are vi businessmen visiting from rebel-held areas of northwest Syria to come visit Islamic State ter territory temporarily for business purposes. Um, uh, so talk going uh, just about the Diwans, which I said are the, probably the main aspect of uh, Islamic State governance now. What's very interesting is that uh, the framework for them was drawn up in the 2013 to 2014 period. And a key figure, this is an unseen document, it's not been uh, 
uh, put in the public realm. A key figure actually in the, in the development of this framework of the Diwan, supposedly according to this internal Islamic State document which was distributed to fighters telling the stories of prominent figures, was a guy called Abu Yahya Al-Ambari. And he was, uh, he was an Afghan, supposedly he had gone to fight in the Afghan Jihad in the 1980s, but he'd also fought in the Iran-Iraq war for the Iraqi army under, under Saddam Hussein's regime. Uh, and he justified it at the time, supposedly according to IS, by saying that he'd been, uh, that it was uh, necessary to gain war expertise and how armies are organized and so on. Uh, but eventually he went back to Afghanistan, uh, got involved in the, the, you know, in the jihad there again, and the establishment of the Taliban. And then he went back to Iraq and he got involved in the, uh, the groups that would then evolve into the Islamic State of Iraq and then into ISIS and, and so on. And, but according to this, and specifically, he put forward, he put, Al Ambari put forward the series of organizations, the diwans and centers. And then he sent them to the Majlis Shura. This is the consultation council that advises uh, uh, the leader of the Islamic State, in this case, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Uh, and uh, they, they built upon that, upon other consultations of the brothers, uh, to form the organizational frameworks for the Diwans. Um, so um, now going on to the specific structures, according to IS, there's this, well, there's this video that was released in July of 2016 uh, that gives a, the, the, an overview of the administrative framework, or at least as they present it. Um, so as I mentioned, the, 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 the Diwans, which are these government departments, for example, the Diwan al-Hisba, uh, as mentioned in the previous presentation by Mara, uh, revol uh, referring to the enforcement of Islamic morality, the Diwan of Zakat, also again mentioned in the previous presentation dealing with Zakat taxation, and uh, which as Mara mentioned is quite a complex system. Um, and then uh, territorially they speak of their wilayas and their, 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 how they've, pr they've divided their territories into all these different provinces. And then they, they also give space for some committees and offices and one of them they mention is the Hydra Committee for example which I mentioned in a previous slide. And then of course they have the very higher bodies like the Delegated Committee, the Caliph himself and the, uh, the Shura Council. Uh, the Delegated Committee, you'll see what this amounts to in a, in a in a subsequent slide. Um, so as I mentioned, the Diwans ostensibly function as government departments. They cover a range of aspects of life, like uh, education, the military, and public services. Um, the impression the video gives is of a very top-down control where you have central ministries issuing directives to their regional officers in the provinces or the wilayas and also at the more local level. Uh, there is also an impression given in the uh, there is also an impression given in the uh, in the uh, 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 in the video uh, that it's all uniform. Like there's, there's the same structure as existing somehow in every in all of these wilayas of the Islamic State. So the question you have to ask yourself is how far is that actually borne out in the ground evidence? And my own particular focus looks at uh, Islamic State documents, both ones that I obtain privately and also those that uh, make it into the open source realm. Uh, and I, in, in relation to this, I think we also need to consider in particular how IS responds to challenges, you know, uh, with local as opposed to more general decision making. So what you find actually is a bit of a mixed picture. Um, if you take the Diwan al-Hisba, for example, which I mentioned deals with the enforcement of Islamic morality, uh, you very clearly have a central Diwan al-Hisba in the Islamic State government, government that can issue general directives to uh, the regional, the, the provincial departments of it. Um, so, for example, this document, which was found in Membij uh, by Kurdish forces, um, was, was issued by the head of the, 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 the general, the head of the general Diwan al Hisba, the Abu Saleh. His name was Abu Saleh uh, al Arabi, and uh, this document from around uh, the, uh, the autumn of 2014, he suggested a an exchange program um, um, of officials between Nainua province in Iraq, this is around the Mosul area, and three of the Syrian provinces, um, uh, uh, Aleppo, Homs, and Raqqa, uh, of Syrian wilayas of the Islamic State, has suggested an exchange program uh, uh, of swapping officials between these provinces so they could gain, they, 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 for, uh, for like, like work experience, if you like. 
Um, so this is an example of a, of a, of, of central uh, of, 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 of a top-down function. Um, another good example actually comes of education. Uh, there are general directives issued by the, the higher Diwan at Talim of the Islamic State, which was led by, well, has been led by a German guy called Reda Sayam, also known as Du al Karnain by his uh, the, the Arabic pen name he goes by in the documents. Um, and uh, a key issue, of course, has been the, of the for the Islamic State. You know, education is a very key thing in terms of promoting its values and ideology to next generation. Um, the question is, how do you integrate uh, the existing uh, uh, administrative framework uh, of teachers who've taught under uh, the uh, Iraqi system and the Syrian system, which is of course markedly different ideologically from uh, the Islamic states? Um, because the Islamic state, of course, doesn't just have, doesn't simply have uh, uh, its own uh, cadres of teachers ready to be able to educate the population. They have to work with, you know, you partly have to work with what you've got. So, um, a key issue then was the Islamic, the Islamic State's Diwan at Talim uh, had to investigate how to deal with these problems, to, to deal with this problem, you know, of having teachers, of educational staff uh, who aren't uh, uh, used to this system, and they coordinated with uh, the Hayat al Bahuf al Ifta which means the investigation and fatwa issuing department or committee of uh, the Islamic State. The terminology isn't always consistent. Uh, again, this conflicts with the video somewhat of the structure of the caliphate because sometimes you see the Hayat al-Bahuf wal-Ifta referred to as the Diwan al-Bahuf wal-Ifta. Um, so the terminology isn't always consistent either. But basically, anyway, in the end, around December of 2014, this uh, this message, this 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 little book was issued by the Hirt al Behuf al Ifta, uh, a clarification message in uh, affirming the ruling on the educational system in the Nusayri government, which refers to the Syrian regime. Uh, in particular, they were the, the 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 document looks into the Syrian education system, and uh, uh, the, the 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 idea is to come up with a ruling on how to deal with the educational staff who are now living in territories controlled by IS territory. The conclusion was, in having chosen to work under the Syrian uh, regime's education system, that these educational staff had fallen into apostasy. Um, and so as a result, there, there had to be repentance programs organized uh, uh, by the relevant uh, local governing bodies of IS uh, in, the, in, in, in these territories. And uh, you know, to, to, to give them dorat shara'i as well, to uh, teach them uh, about, you know, the Islamic State's ideologies and, and value system. Um, again, another, so that's another example of, of uh, top-down governance. And you saw throughout uh, the first half of 2015 in particular, uh, these repentance programs being organized for teachers and educational staff in various uh, IS territory, in various uh, territories of IS, in particular in Syria. Um, Another example of uh, top-down we see with the G General Supervisory Committee of the Islamic State, uh, referred to in the video as the Delegated Committee. Um, it has the power to issue notifications to the, all the, all the Waliyas and Diwans, uh, uh, informing them of a general matter or making a general request. In this case, um, the, the General Supervisory Committee, this is a document uh, I got from a private contact in uh, Haska. Um, it's uh, calling for surveys of the uh, of, uh, of of agricultural staff and, and uh, capabilities in the various provinces. Uh, it's calling for this general survey to be referred back to the Diwan of Zira or the agricultural Diwan, which will be at the higher level, and also to the centres uh, of the Diwan of Zira in, in in the various provinces. Um, so, what about the other side then? These are examples of top-down governance. What? Uh, is there some? Is, uh, what about some more of uh, the issue of more local, uh, more local control? Um, I mentioned this issue about uh, the Islamic State video giving that the impression of, of uniformity. You know that these diwans all exist as very well organized system in all the wilayas, but this is not actually the case, as other internal documents show. This document from Fallujah, for example, uh, from May of uh, 2015. Uh, so this is around uh, nine months after the Fallujah Wilaya 
uh, or province was set up following the IS's complete defeat of all the rival insurgents in the Fallujah area by August of 2014. Um, this document uh, shows that a number of diwans uh, in the Fallujah Wilaya were actually established many months after the Fallujah Wilaya had been set up. So this includes a diwan al zirah for the Fallujah area, a diwan al iqar dealing with real estate. There is no mention of the uh, diwan al iqar in that Islamic State video. Uh, the impression given actually is that the, the diwan al iqar or, or masses of real estate, sorry, are dealt with by the uh, Islamic State Judiciary Department or the Diwan al Uh There's also mention of the establishment of a Diwan al, al, al Zakat and also a Diwan al Rakaz in uh, the Fallujah area. And uh, crucially, the document says that um, it's been decided to form these Diwan uh, in the form of a Diwan or independent office or completely independent, and its connection is only to be with the Wali or the provincial governor of Fallujah, of the Fallujah Wilaya or the general administrative official uh, of, uh, of, of the Fallujah Wilaya or the deputy of, and the deputy will, uh, provincial governor of Fallujah. Um, so the fact that these diwans weren't formed until nine months, uh, uh, some, some diwans of the uh, uh, Islamic State were not formed until after uh, the uh, several months after the Fallujah Wilaya was formed shows that Governance uh, just does illustrate my point about you know it's not quite as uniform as the Islamic State makes it out to be, um, and you know if you did have a top, top a totally top down model of control, it would be very inefficient, uh, particularly when you have to respond to local challenges. Um, so, for example, uh, coming now on to the issue of responding to challenges uh, uh, for facing the Islamic State, one of the big problems they've had uh, is is the issue of medical brain drain, uh, that is medical professionals leaving Islamic State territory because they don't want to live there uh, or, or for whatever reason. Um, and this problem seems particularly pronounced in, um, in, in, in the Mosul area or in the Wilayat Nainua. Um, and uh, this document which I got from a pharmacist uh, who fled Mosul to uh, northern Syria and uh, then from there went on to Turkey. Um, there's a mention of a particular problem of, uh, uh, this is from early 2016, uh, of, of pharmacists and doctors who basically sold all they had in their clinics and, and pharmacies in order to get enough money to, to flee uh, Islamic State territory. Um, so as a result, there's a directive issue, issued here to uh, people in the health department of Wilayat Nainwa because all doctors and medical staff in a given Islamic State province is said to be part of the health administration of that Islamic State wilaya. Uh, and it said it's forbidden to uh, sell uh, medical equipment and uh, medicines to, the, to people outside the wilaya um, for the purpose of clearing out. Um, uh, so ifrag, as, as, as the Arabic term goes, um, this base, they say, refers to um, people selling all their stuff to generate enough money to flee. Uh, and then it orders for copies of this to be sent to the local, relevant local offices in, in, in Nainwa province, like the Islamic police and the Diwan al Siha. Um, uh, then also, you know, another problem has been that uh, uh, for facing the Islamic State has been intelligence penetration by the coalition. Um, and, uh, you know, a number of high profile figures have been taken out. Um, and uh, as a result, for example, in, in various areas over time, it's not done consistently at all at one time, but in various places you see the local administration puts in internet restrictions. Um, these latest ones that came from Mosul, for example, only last month, actually basically put an end to the idea of having a private internet connection. And the only ones that are allowed are, pr are really are private uh, internet, uh, are, are, are internet halls licensed by the Islamic State. Basically, the idea is to stop, is to, um, uh, stop private uh, to limit private internet access as far as possible, uh, because it is pretty clear that uh, one of the ways that you know the coalition gets valuable intel is is through people leaking information to them uh, for whatever reason. Um, so uh, that's an exact that's a note that but all I've talked about so far from internal from those internal documents, you've noticed it probably is, it's, it's all come from Iraq and Syria. Um, and I'd say these provinces and wilayas, they represent the most sophisticated manifestation of the caliphate administration 
or as you use the Arabic term of Tim Keen or realization. Um, but uh, the Islamic State also claims 16 provinces beyond Iraq and Syria. Uh, three in Libya, six in Yemen, two in Bilal al-Haramain, this refers to Saudi Arabia, uh, one in uh, Khorasan, which is Afghanistan, Pakistan, one in West Africa, uh, one in Algeria, one in Sinai, and one in the Caucasus. Uh, it will be noted actually that the 16 provinces uh, referred to here, uh, the Islamic State has occasionally in its propaganda referred to other wilayas or provinces existing. So for example, they claimed a wilayat al-Bahrain in, uh, in, uh, in eastern Saudi Arabia, but actually this turns out to be, uh, it, 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 it doesn't exist at all. Uh, they don't claim it in the video. And in other internal stuff I've seen, they don't, they don't claim a Wilayat al-Bahrain. It just seemed to be a, a propaganda ruse of the moment. Um, generally speaking, these provinces, um, whose relations are managed with the center via the distant provinces administration, they lack a development of governance on the ground. The main exception to this has been Libya. Um, I think Libya always, always offered the ideal environment for the Islamic State in terms of being chaotic. Uh, and having valuable, potential valuable resources and well-established connections with the center uh, because of Libyan jihadis who've been going to Iraq and Syria. Um, this was the only real main exception in terms of realizing governance that could really replicate what you were seeing in Iraq and Syria. Um, so you see this, uh, you see plenty of evidence in, uh, from particularly from the Sirt Strip area along the Mediterranean coastline. Uh, that was controlled by the Islamic State. So, for example, this document from No Failure uh, is an Islamic police document, and it refers to uh, 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 it, uh, it refers to guarantees left by a prisoner uh, when uh, when being brought in or taken out. Um, this is a, uh, from Sirte itself. It's from the health center, the co-optation of the medical administration. There uh, refers to a blood report for a Senegalese fighter. You'll notice it's all done in English, of course, because this is pretty normative that I would say Arabic is not the best language for uh, doing uh, deep medical analysis. So in in English is much more normative. Um, this uh, is a call from within Sirt City for a reconciliation session between factions in Sirt issued by the Islamic State in May of 2016. Uh, and then this is an exam, t exam for, 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 for the conclusion of a Shara'i session. You know, which is which is brought in to teach administrative staff in various areas about and and, and people who've repented about uh, 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 about Islamic State uh, uh, ideology and, uh, and and beliefs and, and so on. Uh, so, for example, this, this this exam, one of the questions is, you know, define Tarhut, what is Tawhid, referring to Islamic monotheism, and and so on and so forth. Oh. Ah, okay. Um, this from uh, this uh, from Khorasan, from the eastern Afghanistan, uh, from eastern Afghanistan in, partic in particular. Uh, it's uh, timing. Uh, it's uh, prayer timings for I think for Ramadan. Um, but beyond this, though, there's not really much at all you get from the Afghanistan area in terms of administration and uh, and documents to show uh, development of real governance. Um, Yemen uh, is particularly interesting because it was a case where a number of uh, Islamic State officials in Yemen actually revolted against the uh, or uh, rejected the Wali or provincial governor that uh, uh, IS Central had appointed over all of the Yemeni provinces and as a result a number of these people were then expelled by the Islamic State. Um, uh, so the Yemeni affiliates of IS have suffered considerably and have, I think, really lost out to AEQ. Uh, you do see some kind of basic, uh, some very rudimentary structures that exist. For example, this, this Shara'i court, but there's no specific wilaya given. It seems like there's only one Shara'i court for the whole of the Yemeni provinces. And it, this, this one deals with a case of someone who was accused of supporting uh, the Houthis in Yemen. And uh, uh, in, in conclusion, the Islamic State requires him uh, to, to issue a repentance because of certain expressions he said, which he insisted were jokes, but actually they say, no, these, co these expressions you uttered uh, constitute uh, kufr and apostasy, and uh, you must repent of them. Um, so as a result of this lack of success for the Islamic State on the distant level, 
There has been some internal skepticism about distant provinces. This has not been publicized yet, but um, uh, I managed to obtain some texts written by a guy called Abu al-Farouq al-Masri, who seems quite, seemed quite well connected to the Islamic State leadership. Uh, and uh, he was based out of Raqqa. He disappeared around six months ago. Um, uh, following an, uh, uh, an internal tract he issued to his followers in Raqqa. Um, he suggested the allegiance pledges, pledges of the distant provinces uh, of these uh, distant affiliates that pledged allegiance and were made into provinces of the uh, distant provinces of the Islamic State. They should have just been taken secretly rather than declaring provinces. Um, he says that in doing that, they were bringing, uh, in, 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 in declaring all these provinces, these, these affiliates from abroad were being brought above you know, were being brought to a level beyond what they actually were. Um, and he specifies, you know, that not all places have the circumstances of Iraq, Syria, and Libya, uh, you know, to realize governance on the ground. Um, so there is a, a question of, you know, is, is IS actually, just, is, is IS actually heeding these criticisms? Because we see in a lot of places where the Islamic State has claimed a mark on the, in the international level in Somalia and in Tunisia and in Indonesia and the Philippines and Bangladesh, uh, they haven't declared we liars in these places. They just claim operations. Um, so it's, a, it's an interesting question actually of whether the we liar model actually on the international level uh, has, has effectively been suspended. Um, these are Abu al Farouk al Masri's works. The, so this is banned in Raqqa. This is the political and organizational program for the Islamic State, as suggested by Abu al Farouk al Masri. And then his Risalif in Menhaj. Uh, his subsequent work that got him uh, disappeared. Uh, and then the particular page here where he talks about this issue of the distant provinces and that they should have, he suggests they should have taken their allegiance pledges secretly. Um, so, I mean, that, that concludes my presentation. And this is my email contact and my website. And thank you very much. <laughs>